Yo, it's Corey here at Floodway, and if you're a screen printer doing reclaim, then you know exactly how messy the process can be. And if you've ever wondered how bad it can be for your drain, and how to make that a little easier to deal with, then, well, I'm here to show you today. So the less time we spend on maintenance like this, the more time we're adding values to our clients. And in this video, I'm gonna show you a cheap, simple, super effective solution for keeping junk out of your drain. It's been 497 days since we last cleaned this reclaim filter. So I figured it'd be a great opportunity to show the salt strap again and sort of prove how good it works. Without the bucket, the manufacturer and most shops will recommend cleaning it every week to avoid clogging. And we've gone literally a year and a half. So let's rip this thing apart and see just how bad it is. Okay, so I shot a bunch of footage while Sam and I cleaned the system and I'm just going to narrate and talk about some of the clips as we go through the process. So first things first, we can see here's the actual bucket. We removed the inlet pipe here because it got a little clogged and that's how we could tell the bucket was full pretty much. Uh, so the first thing we're doing is pulling the whole system out. The wheels are great for that, of course. Um, we're going to be using the sink still, so we put a separate bucket under the drain in the meantime to catch all the sludge that we're going to be pouring off. Uh, after it clogged, we let it settle because we knew we'd be cleaning it soon and we wanted this top layer of water to be relatively settled and clear. So we do have a shop sink nearby and that's where we poured off all this kind of settled top water. As you can see, the amount of junk in the bucket is pretty impressive, especially considering how clean our screens are before the dip tank. So we brought it over to the bike scale just out of curiosity and almost spilt the entire bucket on the floor. Hang on this. <laughs> but anyway, we have a bucket ready for the sludge we're pulling out. So once the top water is gone, we move all the sludge into that bucket. And this is when we could really start smelling it. It's still not too bad though, because we have a strict rule about non-printing stuff going down this reclaim drain. We scraped out all the floaters too, and I think the way the inlet reaches down into the trap is pretty critical, because as you can see, there's a ton of solids that float near the surface rather than sinking, and these will eventually clog the drain. Once the bucket is cleaned out, we got started on the round net box, and first things first, just taking out the top screen with the thick green thing to catch more solids. And after a year, it's obvious that the bucket is not perfect. Stuff still gets through, but it's definitely getting caught in this part of the system. It took a while to rinse it out, and that's about the only reason I'd clean our system sooner next time. These screens are the worst part of the process by far. So yeah, let's just zoom through this part a little bit. Another reason I wouldn't want to leave it this long, again, is because the dirtier it is, the more water you use. And we overflowed that bucket under the drain pretty quick. I was a bit distracted with filming, so we had to take a break to mop that up. But overall, that's the only hiccup we had, and I think it's directly related to the system just being maxed out. So maybe I'll clean it more like once a year instead of when it clogs and spills everywhere. One of the biggest surprises was this science project under the bottom screen. So let's just take a moment to appreciate this footage and all its raw glory. That's art, buddy. How long have you been growing that for? That was weird and just another reason to clean it a bit more often, but once that screen was done, the process was feeling really close to complete. Just need to get the tank itself cleaned out and the two micron filters, so that's what we did next. First, we bailed out the sludge water into the sink and then I ran a bunch of fresh water through the system to dilute and rinse it out. I started by bailing buckets of water in before realizing I had a hose for a mop bucket I could stick in there and kind of automate it a bit. In the meantime, clean the sink out because that's where we've been putting all the sludge from the box 
and then straight into the micron filters which are pretty simple lefty loosey righty tighty and then pretty much all that's left was to reassemble the unit and clean up the first thing through the freshly cleaned system is the top water from the bucket we had under the drain for the rest of the solids and after all that was said and done we were able to fit it all into a single five gallon bucket and then we pretty much just let it sit until it hardens into a solid puck the plan is to get this disposed of properly when the time comes, but they're not taking up much space, so we just haven't done that yet. So here's what it looks like after a couple of weeks of settling and pouring the water off, and you can really see now just how much sludge we're saving from the drains with this super simple setup. To me, that's huge. It's just less stuff down the drain, and being able to collect this much without maintaining it every single week is huge. It's a huge time saver. So that's it. I hope this shows just how much junk we can keep out of the drains without having to introduce more chemistry to break down the ink further or spend a ton of money or time dealing with it every week. We can just put something really simple like this do it yourself, solid strap up front, save a ton of time, save a ton of junk from the drain. I will put this video in a playlist, so if you want to see more of that $5 solid trap, then please check that out. And if you want to see more videos like this from the shop, then please hit that subscribe button. Until next time, you know I love chatting in the comments and on Instagram, so I'll see you there. Thanks again.